So do you guys remember like back in the day, way before social media, you know, before DMs, before emails, uh, people would actually write with pens and, and paper. Well, back in my day. Mm -hmm. Back then, a fun thing to do to get to know new people from around the world was become pen pals. I did this for several years with Marin, a random stranger who lived halfway across the world in Berlin. We would write letters back and forth every couple months and sometimes include a, a few surprise goodies in the packages. I always got a smile when I would open the package up and I see a whole bunch of marzipan bars packed in with a letter. And that's kind of how I see film swaps. Emulsion pen pals, you know, two strangers that probably have never met in person, but they share a connection through film. I've had the chance to talk with some truly awesome people doing this over the years. Even though we've never physically hung out, I would absolutely still call these people friends. Probably the, the easiest way to go about a film swap is when both sides just kind of shoot what they want, send it off to the other person, and just hope for some happy accidents. And you definitely do come away with, with some cool pictures, but the hit rate isn't always going to be so high. If you want to take out some of the mystery, you can jot down some notes or kind of pre-plan some ideas with the other person before going in and shooting the role. But probably the most important thing that I can suggest to, to get the best exposures when you're swapping is to shoot for the other person. And what I mean by this is try to think of things that you could do to shoot your side that will uh, set the other person up or add to the overall image. There's a couple techniques when you're shooting multiple exposures that work particularly well with film swaps. Uh, silhouettes work really well, uh, shooting repeating patterns, uh, or any kind of like superimposed words or text. With silhouettes, portions of the image are both going to be under and overexposed simultaneously, which is going to outline the shape of whatever backlit subject you're shooting. This allows for the second shot to easily show through and fill in the underexposed area. Silhouettes make good use of high contrast scenes to create a definitive separation. While at first it might seem like a better idea to evenly distribute the weight always in the center or remove the busyness of an image, uh, don't discount the happy accidents that can occur when you offset your subject to either the side or the edge of the frame. Words that are lit up, kind of like neon signs, uh, tend to work really well because just like silhouettes, it gives whatever you're shooting plenty of room for the second shot. But keep in mind, there's no right way to set the images up for the other shot when you're swapping. It can definitely be fun to play around with motion blur, incorporate lights or bokeh, you know, use different colors, gels, or even special effects filters. Ooh. Ah. The unpredictability is probably one of my favorite parts of film swapping, because you, a lot of times you come away with some humorous mashups. And I just finished up a film swap with Dave the Old Camera Guy. He had sent me a roll of T-Max 400, which I developed in T-Max Liquid Developer at 75 degrees for about five and a half minutes. Dave's going to be posting images from the role of Fuji 200 that I sent him. So if you're not already subscribed to Dave's channel, I highly recommend, you know, check him out, subscribe. Uh, Dave's just such a super cool dude. And, uh, and all the other people too that I've mentioned in this video, uh, I'll have links to either their Instagram or their channels in the description for the video. So, so definitely check that out.
I hope everybody's well. And until the next video, we'll see you.